job, Hawkeye. Compliments? Guess that's why he switches to Ronin. Our insider knowledge makes this a gruesome and crushing scene. Clint wouldn't even notice the dust or know what he was seeing if he did notice. We can even just barely see the family dust settling. Cold Opens, in this case a scene before the Marvel logo, aren't exclusive to Endgame. All of these movies have one. But this one is definitely more impactful, catching up with an Avenger we missed last time. Infinity War actually opened on the Marvel logo, but forwent the typical theme for some dire Thanos music, since that was his movie. Now, Endgame ties us back into the emotional ending of Infinity War with some light dusting. We get the Marvel logo we've seen before, but with some blank spots, even showing where dusted Avengers should be, but aren't. You may not even notice right away, but it leaves you feeling a little empty. Granted, our remaining non-snapped Avengers just so happen to be our OGs. So, good to go. Also, the Marvel logo switched from red to black with a red 10 for 2018 MCU movies because it was the 10th anniversary and the red 10 pops on a black background. Captain Marvel and Endgame are both 2019 MCU and post-snap. The black now feels like mourning. Feels fitting that the return to the Benatar is with a little late 60s traffic, even if 62.5 to 87.5 percent of the Guardians are gone slash dead depending on how you count. A heart for anyone who figures out my math on that one. Also, Dear Mr. Fantasy is pretty on the nose. Something to make us all happy takes us out of this gloom. I'm gonna talk about this in the conclusion more, but this entire movie is a reminder of where everyone started compared to who they are now. If this doesn't make you think about Robert Downey Jr.'s workout routine in that tank top, we opened on the Infinity War timeline, and now we're in Endgame proper with Tony's first goodbye message. It's a smart misdirect. You don't even realize the movie is telegraphing Tony's death at first. A moving and appropriate choice, allowing him a chance to look his death in the face and let Pepper know he'll be alright. This is also the same subdued but gorgeous piece of music from Alan Silvestri used during Tony's funeral. Captain Marvel to the rescue! We will miss your beautiful beard, Cap, but knowing who you have to be in this movie, I understand. Hugging and love and tearing up before the 10 minute mark? I said this movie is about comparing our current selves to our past selves, and Nebula is a prime example. A story that spans, what, four movies with Karen Gillan? Two subtle moments that mean a lot coming from her. Here, take that. You find him, you put that on. You hide. A timely reminder that Cap and Tony have not made up since Civil War yet. Let's go get this son of a bitch. Language. Listen to that Avengers score! Updated with more horns, more triumph, even the title card tells us whose movie this is. Golden, shining, solid, clean. Yup! 1940s Iceman gets to go to space before going back in time. Wholesome memes. One last little trick making you think he still has the stones is if he used the Power Stone to pull up the floor, but it's just Iron Hulk. Let's call that teamwork. I am inevitable. No one ever talks about how Thanos ripped off Agent Smith, but that's okay. It's really not the I am statement that I walk away with. <laughs> Barely comeuppance, but still comeuppance. Oh, Thor's only saying that because you people on the internet were so mean to him. But a perfect showcase of how revenge will never really satisfy you. In fact, it's a good way to fall down the depression spiral. What a real closing to Infinity War. Starting this movie with more defeat, even in success. But how about this upbeat Avengers-y space adventure-y tone? The trick that's played on us. All right, let's get this son of a bitch. We'll chase him around the galaxy, fight some battles. I really, I really need it after the downer of Infinity War. Oh, never mind. He did. Oh my gosh, it's real. And it's possibly the best decision made for this movie. I asked for it in my Infinity War video, and I think everyone was a little nervous we'd get a Control-Z. But goodness, is it not. Five years of living in Thanos' universe. Went on a date the other day. I, I didn't even know what to talk about. What did you talk about? My job, his job. I give Joe Russo props for being willing to take all the ridiculous, unwarranted backlash for this representation right in himself. So uh, we'll call it a... Baby steps win? That's great. And even the old timer is accepting and doesn't even bat an eye. I knew I loved Cap. Gotta move on. Even before he confesses to Nat later, it's apparent that he's done moving on. As in, can't, won't, not gonna move on. Thanos should have killed all of us. Uh, clairvoyance? Ha! The Terminal Beach, a sci fi anthology book, contains a short entitled Endgame. Overkill would know all about that. I can hear the questions in the back of my mind about why they'd put this van in storage, but when you think about it, whoever found it assumed Scott and whoever was at the controls got dusted, and the van is registered to Scott's company, so it's probably his ex-wife's storage unit. Or she rented a space for him. Which reminds me this movie is woefully under Judy Greerd. Mm. But the storage unit thing stands. Looking forward to the spin-off, The Rat. We'd all have been screwed without him. 
Jack's Films was pitting Endgame against Avatar, but this kid knows what's up. Such a 28 Days Later vibe. Again, our insider knowledge means it's not eerie for us, just sad. Getting to see both Clint and Scott deal with it for the first time throws us right back into shock. This quick indie film tracking shot is, believe it or not, one of my favorite moments in the movie. You barely notice his running is silent because of the panicky violin. Remember when the casting of Old Cassie spoiled the time travel for all of us, but then we were dead wrong about every other part? Yeah, I mean, we did. You're so big. <laughs> Ugh, that crushing despair that you missed five years of your daughter's life mixed with relief that she's alive. Paul Rudd, sir, you are an actor. If I move on, who does this? Maybe it doesn't need to be done. But isn't that the point? The question isn't who will do this, it's what do I do without this? I'm not gonna lie, finally really digging into Nat's thoughts and feelings make it hurt all the more. Nat either dyed her hair, I mean, Scarlet did, obviously, but I like the implication that in the five years since the snap, getting a haircut or keeping up on her blonde became less of a priority, and those are Natasha's actual red roots growing out. Scott Lang, the high-angle security camera guy. Have either of you guys ever studied quantum physics? Only to make conversation. And I'm gonna sing Paul Rudd's praises again. He has to capture confusion, disbelief, confusion, despair, optimism, and confusion, all while still being his comedic self. Are you talking about a time machine? No, no, of course not. No, not a time machine. This is more like, um, yeah, like a time machine. <laughs> Honesty. Tony, prepare for some guests who have some crazy ideas and you're gonna be angry about it. They'll need your help with a device only you're knowledgeable about and if you agree, you can get your family back. You know, your surrogate son. Oh, and also maybe kill some monsters along the way. Maguna. Sly way of pretending like you didn't actually get your wish to name her after Pepper's Uncle Morgan. After your eccentric uncle, uh, Morgan. Morgan H. Stark, you want some lunch? Aw, is the H for Howard? Named after two men. Rescue shadowing. We did stand, and yet here we are. Some are still standing, but Tony sits. It's a little uh, metaphor for you. I know, it's crazy. I'm wearing shirts now. Yeah. <laughs> that is the weird part. Self-awareness. First Hulk lost, then Banner lost. It might feel a touch underwhelming as the payoff to what Hulk's problem was in Infinity War, but I, I really think it's that simple. Hulk had never been beaten so badly, and for what? The guy he shared a body with basically hated him, and no one on Earth will ever treat him as well as people did on Sakaar. This was a very logical solution. You want to take a picture with him? Yeah, yeah look, should. he's even saying no he doesn't, I Wait, get come it. On. <laughs> Professor Hulk is a more warm-hearted and confident version of Bruce, even if the differences are pretty subtle. Oh, God! <laughs> I love that of all the Avengers, Hulk is the one with multiple catchphrases and a pan club. Say green. Bruce. Listen to your mom. She knows better. Obedience advice. Hold this off. I remember a time when that seemed pretty impossible too. Flirting? Do we still, we still acknowledge that stuff from Age of Ultron? Yeah, yeah, flirting. Flirting continuity. Man who controls Iron Man suit cannot operate kitchen sprayer. Almost as if his subconscious needed to remind him that normal sea was never really for him. Oh, he sees the photo of his dad reminding him that science and engineering, yada yada. Nope, he actually did lose a child. It speaks to how much he has now. I don't personally believe Tony was ever truly anxious about the tech specifically, but losing his daughter because of some changes in the past, that's what he can't abide. This time in the shape of a Mobius strip inverted. Proof that Tony's STEM level is far beyond any of ours, since a Mobius strip inverted would just be a Mobius strip as far as I know. I love you 3000. Oh, that's so cute, but I, I bet I never think about it ever again. What's new with composting? Interesting science. Hmm. No, I can't help everybody. Sort of seems like you can. Not if I stop. I can put a pin in it right now. Jokes aside, if this isn't character growth, Tony doesn't ask for permission, he just does. But now he has a partner and is genuinely asking for Pepper's advice. Something tells me I should put it in a lock box and drop it to the bottom of the lake. But would you be able to rest? And they made the right call about not playing coy about where this all leads. The shock of Tony's death isn't nearly as important as preparing us and making it feel earned. Even if he sees it coming, the love of his life knows there's no rest for Tony when he has the power to effect change. Guys, this, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, well, you'd hope all the things you've done would give you a real bright burning sensation. Time travel! <laughs> I, I see this as an absolute win. <laughs> You're hired. It wound up pushing time through Lang. It's tricky, dangerous. Somebody. Hmm, wonder if that might work on anyone else in the future. Tony removing the Black Panther scratches was the right call. Could have been an awkward reminder. It's awesome. Careful on reentry. There's an idiot in the landing zone. <laughs> Do astute observations. What's up, regular size man? <laughs> Side note, thank you for realizing how funny Don Cheadle is, filmmakers. 
generosity. Also a meme win. Also full CG character handing something to a live action character. Supersonic Rocket Ship is exactly the kink song Thor would have on repeat in his new home away from home where nobody has to be hip, nobody needs to be out of sight, even if maybe they should be. Two CGI characters enter a house to converse with two other CGI characters and a guy in a fat suit. None, None of this, this makes, makes sense. sense. <laughs> Korg barely glances away from his game for a split second. Feel free to log into the Wi-Fi. No password, obviously. Also, Korg's alive! Like, in the flesh, not just confirmed by a director. Bottle opener. You look like melted ice cream. <laughs> you mean Chris Hemsworth's workout routine? Look at those abs. It's just a little subcutaneous fat. Who chopped Thanos' big head off? Um, Stormbreaker? Korg is always a win. You wanna know who helped me out of it? <clears throat> Natasha. It was you. A moment that doesn't really matter if you missed Ragnarok, but you're rewarded if you saw it. Quick things like this are why the MCU works. We're not into it. Don't care. Couldn't care less. Goodbye. Not to mention this further shift from OG Thor allowing him to truly embrace Ragnarok Thor. Man, first night shot of a city shows that roughly half the buildings have their lights out. Want to do a two minute wonder with a sword fight at the end? You'll need Hiroyuki Sonata. Even if it's tough to believe that Ronin could beat the Twilight Samurai so easily, Hiroyuki Sonata is always a win. And Shinjin's been killed twice now in Marvel. Drifting left. One side there, Lebowski. Lebowski's dead, Tony. Hey ho, A113 in a non Pixar movie. Oh, hey, a, a bigger one. Why don't we just find baby Thanos, you know, and. First of all, that's horrible. It's Thanos. I mean, if Deadpool can't do it, none of you can. Time cop, time after time. Quantum leap. Wrinkle in time, somewhere in time. Hot tub time machine. Hot tub time machine. All great examples. Super appreciate only one gets a double mention. You could say it's a great white buffalo. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future, and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. I really, 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 really appreciate this explanation. It's hard to have time travel not be a panacea for every problem that ever comes up ever again. The multiverse is the answer, even if some people may be lying about it later. <laughs> Thor's back, but he's not back. He said he was there for the beer, so he's checked out of all the important stuff. Jamming more kinks on his headphones, I assume. At first, this is just played off as a bit of sad nostalgia, but you can bet Tony made it clear to Clint that he needed to confirm objects can be brought back with them, breaking the old Terminator rule. Never exposited for us, just an example of filmmakers trusting their audience a little. Take it to Asgard, which is where I'm from. <laughs> Leave it to the nicest Avenger to try to keep the smile up for the drowning tale. Ha! <laughs> Hulk's eating his own ice cream. And no one's got a fork for Nebula! This is the fight of our lives. And we're gonna win. Whatever it takes. He's pretty good at that. To be fair, he's had so much practice. But I don't ever get tired of it. Glad he got one more solid rousing speech in there. Promise to bring that back in one piece, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'll do my best. These goofy little character interactions are such a huge part of why the MCU and these team-up movies are such a gift to all of us. Rocket and Hawkeye's first time working together, first time meeting, it's that feeling I think I first described in Civil War, where my two buddies I've known independently for years are messing with each other and having a good time. It's like introducing your cool friend to your other cool friend and they both just get cooler in the process and you feel cooler by association. As promises go, that was pretty lame. See you in a minute. <laughs> Maybe smash a few things along the way. I think it's gratuitous, but whatever. Gratuitous or not? Wait, so whose workout routine is this? Let's just call it Professor Hulk's. <sighs> <sighs> Believably selling the bit. Do you have anything with pants? I appreciate that there's no real shade thrown at movies that weren't as loved as others. They'll do it sometimes to say, hey, look, we're cool, we hate this too, but no. You're allowed to like the Dark World. It's still part of the MCU. Some people have even made videos about why it's alright to like it. <laughs> Thor found a beer pouch in his time travel shrink suit. God slap. You guys watch each other's six. They take that to like the most insane extremes. Gamora's uh, saving her sister. Wow, never thought I'd miss a baddie's theme. Ronan's obsession clouds his judgment. Thanos probably predicted Ronan's betrayal from the beginning, just letting us know how cunning he really is. As far as I'm concerned, that's America's ass. Be yep, behind the scenes of iconic moments, and Tony lampshading some of the more unbelievable ones. All right, get him on his feet. And I'll stand around posing up a storm later. Flick me. <laughs> There's a side story here where Nebula and Tony meet a couple times a month to practice paper football, and I want to see it. My, how things have changed. Last time Tony was falling from this building, it was tense, and now he's nearly invincible. Hmm. Someone pointed that out a year ago. Hail Hydra. Ha! 
The MCU finally got that moment some of the comic community was so upset about for like a week. But talk about more character growth. Knowing that just because you can take them all, done it before, doesn't mean you should or even need to. Loki's alive? Maybe? Oh, that worked a treat. You thought I was so crazy. I had no idea how oh, was gonna work. OG formal Thor mixed with rebooted Ragnarok no Thor. He was like this all along, guys. You just didn't see it. Oh, you got me. Sh Language! <laughs> yes, sir. I can do this all day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. This is one of those scenes you'd write in your head and you'd wish they'd put it in the movie, but then they gave it to us. That is America's ass. Compliments. If I give up the time stone to help your reality, I'm dooming my own. And there'd be no bargaining. I'm not sure the science really supports that. We now get to see the difference between Banner and Professor Hulk. Bruce is still unsure, a little jittery, whereas Professor Hulk barely took a second to think before going to take the time stone from the ancient one. Strange, he gave it away. He gave it to Thanos. Willingly? Yes. Why? I have no idea. Maybe he made a mistake. Or I did. I can't believe how well thought out this was. Strange knew he had to give the stone willingly to Thanos. It couldn't be taken because then the Ancient One wouldn't have known Strange saw the only outcome in which they win. Her ability to see the future but not beyond her death makes this all work. He sent her a freaking coded message through Diamond Death. Avengers. In case you're confused, 2014 Thanos would absolutely know about the Avengers since he was behind Loki's missions to Earth that failed because of the Avengers in 2012. I'm totally from the future. <laughs> Honesty. And hugging. <laughs> Apparently all Asgardians think raccoons are rabbits? The rabbit is correct and clearly the smartest among you. Rat is <laughs> Worthy. Heartbreaking and a true depiction of depression that Thor believed he was unworthy because of his failure. That crushes me on a personal level being able to relate and brightens my spirit all at the same time that there is such a visual representation for Thor and anyone with depression. Hear this message. You are still worthy. Worthy of respect, love, relationships, hammers, whatever. Love it. So he's an idiot. Yeah. Intuition. Tiny little moments revealing our Gamora beneath the facade of 2014 Gamora. A slight recoil from Thanos' touch, a hand on her weapon when Moth threatens Nebula. I would never betray you. Amazing. Before Guardians 1 and 2 and Infinity War, I believe Nebula could not even conceive of betraying her father. Again, showing her growth over the years. There's another way to retake the Tesseract and acquire new particles. Ha! <laughs> Secretary Jeremiah might have accidentally reminded Tony of that. That's been shield property for over 70 years. And I know for a fact they were there. Who's they? What are we doing? How I know. Yeah, not to get all cap on you. To look on the bright side. Of course I have it. But we know how he knows because what Howard was working on was the super soldier serum. And Tony knows because they all found out together that Bucky killed his dad. Well, Cap already knew, but Tony found out in front of them. Meaning, without the events of Civil War, without the battle that destroyed the Avengers and led to them being separated in Infinity War, they may have failed. Stan Lee catchphrases. Hey man, make love, not war. I've said it a few times now, but thank you, Stan. We, I'll never stop thanking you for all of this. The Blu-ray and DVD have a really great tribute to Stan touching on and talking about most of his cameos. There may never be a more genuine, positive, energy radiating man. Stan Lee is and will always be a win. Yes? This is Captain Stevens. A bunch of fake naming geniuses on the Avengers. One puts an S on the end of his first name and the other just steals the name of the guy he's talking to, who happens to be his dad, and combines it with his wife. Howard Potts. One of them had a hippie beard. Hippie, like Bee Gees or Mungo Jerry? Definitely Mungo Jerry. Was Wolverine in there somewhere and I missed it? Ooh, that look. Destroyed but still in love and so excited to see her look. Ooh. I thought my dad was tough on me. And now, looking back on it, I just remember the good stuff. Such a gift to give Tony this closure with his dad, one of his most strained relationships. Also hugging. You tell us where it is, then we'll be on our way. So I looked up the German translation for Liebchen, you know, Hydra leader that came out of the Nazis, makes sense. And no option is less condescending than the last in this context. Condescension isn't really a win. Oh, I know. Whatever it takes. When you realize that Cap's words were the catalyst for two main characters' deaths. Whatever it takes. The last five years I've been trying to do one thing, get to right here. 
That's all it's been about, bringing everybody back. I have so many thoughts on this scene. The contrast to Infinity War's version where Gamora was unwillingly sacrificed, now giving us a picture of true love between these two, giving everything they have to save the other. Very particular fantastical circumstances. Loving relationships don't usually, and IRL shouldn't require you to sacrifice your life. But as a hyper-realized version of reality, this was it for Nat. She needed to save her family, Clint included, finally wiping the red from her ledger. So much of her journey in the MCU was trying to find her purpose, figure out which side she was on, and she finally feels like she's found it, just in time to die for it. Mingo. As much as this smile does make me sob, she's giddy, she's ecstatic that she has a chance to fix it, and she's not gonna let anything stand in her way. It's okay. Even her own self-sacrifice. And even with the victory of the stone, Alan Silvestri's score reinforces the dread and despair we are all feeling. Do we know if she had family? Yeah. Us. While that's probably self-evident, they actually had a conversation about it. I used to have nothing, and then I got this, this family, and I was, I was better because of it. So, of course she's willing to give up her life for these people. They're all she has. Oh! <laughs> Character continuity. Let me do something good, something right. No. I really wanted to open a can of worms this week and talk about Thor, but I just have way too much to say, so I have to put it off for the conclusion. Right now, I'll say this is another crushing Thor moment that brings me to tears every time I see it. It's a perfect representation of Thor fighting against his depression and trying again to undo it with a quick fix, to atone for his internalized sins, something we all know doesn't work. His friends finally see it. You're in no condition. Tony isn't talking about Thor's weight gain, and his instant defeat in the way he hangs his head makes the blood drain from my body. It's gotta be me. But the radiation's mostly gamma. It's like, uh, I was made for this. But also, does everyone get the best moment from their entire 10-year story, or what? This is a payoff from the Avengers. So you're saying that the Hulk, the other guy, saved my life? It's a nice sentiment. Saved it for what? I guess we'll find out. And when you really think about it, Hulk doesn't have the intelligence to use the stones. He'd probably accidentally snap himself back to Sakaar. But with the brains to make the right wish and the Gamma Brawn to survive the snap, Professor Hulk was made for this. Also, there seems to be an entire cult-like following of Hot Professor Hulk. Let's just say his design and implementation are phenomenal and leave it at that. If you remember, everyone Thanos snapped away five years ago, we're just bringing them back to now, today. Don't change anything from the last five years. Seems obvious, but when your daughter's life is on the line, you make sure. Take it off! No, wait, Bruce, are you okay? Cap would know a thing or two about sticking it out when everyone else thinks you're dying. Send it off, kill it, kill their actors! I can do this! A little touch that using the stones actually reduces muscle mass on the arm, like it literally sucks the life out of you. <laughs> I love how they subtly answered the what about the birds question here. Yep, they got snapped, now they've blipped. Honey? Listen to that score. Not something we get to hear often in the MCU. Quiet, peaceful, hopeful. Honey. Who knew a guy answering a phone could give you so many emotions? Just in case it was unclear how Ant-Man survived. Well, that's one way to soft reboot the Avengers. Pretty brutal. Canopy, canopy, canopy! A little military realism there. Three times is an emergency. Still a badass bad guy. His score's not hurting anything. Plus, now he's got the sick double-sided buster sword. What's he been doing? Absolutely nothing. This scene. This just matter of fact, well, Thanos is back. There's like a bit of disbelief, but also just numbness. Because of course, of course he's back. Of course it couldn't be that easy for us. You know, it's a trap, right? Yeah, I don't much care. Where are the stones? And these guys, falling right back into their roles. Cap concerned for the stones, strategy, Thor being matter of fact, let's kill him. Tony being cocky, who's Akbar? They knew it was coming, we're ready, they're ready. <laughs> That's a beautiful beard. Norse god braided beautiful beard, hair too. And believe it or not, this heck yeah moment is actually a powerful emotional moment. Just because Thor is feeling a little better and ready to fight doesn't mean he's magically better. His substance abuse didn't disappear. He didn't magically revert to shredded Thor. He didn't lightening his depression or PTSD away. He's still got work to do on himself. Let's kill him properly this time. But he is a badass good guy.
Okay, quick. Someone grab some pin particles, go back to 2007, and tell your past self that in 12 years, you'll witness a scene where three main characters you love collectively and independently, because each has a trilogy of movies filled with character and world building, as well as four shared movies, face off against a villain that's been teased and cameoed for seven years, then is given his own movie where he beats these three. Oh, and this moment comes with roughly an hour left in the movie, and watch yourself laugh in your own face. No one, no three should be able to carry so much weight in three pairs of legs, walking towards a person purple giant. <laughs> And one last battle for these heroes to go out on, working together as a mother flipping team. Did I mention that sword is baller? Is that like weapon teamwork? Oh, never mind. Yuppers, yup, yup, Cap is worthy. I knew it. <laughs> Me too. Not to mention more character growth. Thor was nervous last time, and now he's just excited that his buddy is worthy and has the power of the gods. <laughs> yes! Did he just shockwave Mjolnir off of his shield a la Avengers and Age of Ultron all by himself? That I did not see coming. But I love that once he realizes he can harness it, why not? Just to be clear, the worthy to hold thing only applies to Mjolnir, and there's actually a couple moments that maybe show Thanos is not worthy. It looks like he goes to grab it here, and it's repelled like an opposite polarity magnet, and then he seems to specifically grab Cap's hand here. But to be fair, Thanos is currently paying Thor back for Infinity War for something that hasn't happened to him. So... Yeah, you're right. In all my years of conquest, it was never personal. But I'll tell you now what I'm about to do to your stubborn, annoying little planet. You could maybe say it was a smile on your face? I'm gonna enjoy it. Or no, no. Okay then. <sighs> Doesn't even need to say it this time. On your left. Hey, Sam's finally the faster one. Also callback, clearly. <laughs> How are you supposed to do this is much excitement and emotion? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still going. <laughs> Rescue! Rescue. <laughs> Rescue. <laughs> Even Howard the Duck's back. <laughs> Sylvester's score just keeps building. Every time you think you've reached peak triumph, he pushes a little further with a few more characters. <laughs> and then the score travels back down, preparing you for what's about to come, getting your blood pumping, endorphins flowing, edge of your seat. What is this? Avengers! Assemble. I actually give them tons of credit for not doing this slow-mo because this is a hero shot that's got just about everybody in it. And these are the scenes you're gonna watch a thousand times and notice something new probably every time. Hulk smashing and tossing that guy like a bench. Little Wasp sizing up for a flying kick. You probably didn't miss Giant Man punching a Chitauri Leviathan, but it's a win. Drax combo stabbing plus teamwork with a cord. Ah! And yes, and yes, yes, sir. Rescue and Iron Man teamwork. And all in one long take, carrying the battle from one to the next, calling back to the first Avengers fight in Avengers. Cause now they're all Avengers. Spider-Man and Giant Man saving Iron Man. A Korg uppercut. No, no, give me that. You have the little one. <laughs> Doesn't matter the stakes, they're still gonna have fun. Oh, this is nice. Agreed, hugging. They're there now. And this, this look on Tony's face of pure elation, like he's almost holding back tears. I honestly don't know who this movie thinks it is. Not cinema, not cinema. What the? The first thing he mentioned when he got off the ship? The thing he was most terrified of happening, happening, and then being powerless to stop it? Giving him and us this moment before the end? Uh, uh, hey, some attention to detail. The map of the battle on Tony's HUD gets a red marker when Scott sets off a van alarm. Get it started, we'll get the stones to you. We're on it, Cap. He did say he calls him Cap, so she was listening. Even though he was totally lying. Cap, Captain, Steve, sorry, America. <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> Which makes this another example of the difference between the real hero, Hope, and Scott, the hero trainee. <laughs> also, if you thought it was weird these two didn't get a reunion, as far as they're concerned, they just saw each other a few days ago when Hope put Scott into the quantum tunnel. Sorcerer Supreme, Supreme Sorcerer. I have to hotwire it. Just like Avengers, everybody gets to use their unique skills. Activate instant kill! <laughs> another payoff from a different movie. We always wanted to know how it worked. Stabbing, it's, it's lots of stabbing. <laughs> 
It might be stronger than vibranium, but it's nothing compared to uh, witch power? Mindstone power, I guess? Super love that Wanda gets this moment where she had him beat, proving that she was right. I don't even know who you are. You will. Also, this reminds me of something fun. Infinity War opens with Thanos in this armor and helmet, and he presumably traded the sword for the glove and power stone. But once he gets the space stone, he takes his helmet and armor off and is in just, like, this outfit the entire war. Because with two or more stones, what did he have to fear? Not much. Damn, Strange. Help, somebody help! Hey, Queens. Heads up. <laughs> Headline reads, Brooklyn native throws hammer at teen from Queens. I got you, kid. Hot potato teamwork involving a Pegasus. <laughs> bye bye, ship. Wow, it's not often you see genuine distress on Grimace's face. I'll play it, Danvers. I don't know how you're gonna get us through all of that. Don't worry. She's got help. I mean, I don't know what the odds are that all the lady heroes would be in one area, but I also really don't care because it's a phenomenal form up moment that gives me a big dumb grin. And it's pure fan service, which you'll never hear me complain about. And even though it's not explicitly stated, I'm reminded of something a very smart woman once said. You know, we usually work as a team here. And she gave Wanda a full dose of that in Infinity War from her and Okoye. She's not alone. Nat's MCU arc has been going from lone wolf bad guy to moral gray area spy trying to atone to team member to team leader to team savior. To me, this is for Black Widow. This is her family. This is what she died for. These are the people she died for coming together to protect each other. That, that means something. Also, the obvious complaint is that Captain Marvel shouldn't need any help, but like, she, she did? They held Thanos at bay as long as they could to get her to the portal. There's always so much going on, these dark whatevers barely get on-screen deaths now. Queen Valkyrie! Thor learned his lesson, going for the head. Together! <laughs> yes, they managed to give her an actual, yes, she deserves to play on this playground moment. She's hugely powerful, but it's still not going to matter against the Power Stone. His cunning and will to hold the Power Stone in his hand is still superior to Captain Marvel. A gesture we all instantly understand, and the detail of Strange's hand shaking because he's focused on other magic and not the magic of keeping his hand still from the nerve damage. I am inevitable. And I... even say. Turns out Iron Man was the one to cut the wire and jump on the grenade. You can actually see the power of the stones eating through his nano suit as he tries to hold the energy back. True, true self-sacrifice where Tony puts his own self-interests aside for the greater good. Bravo to this moment, this performance, this closure. Bringing it all the way back to the first time that he said that at the end of the movie that kicked this all off. Dude. I am Iron Man. Dude. Thanos believed himself inevitable, unbeatable, fated to win because he got to see his destiny play out. He knew he'd won. He believed his cause to be righteous and that the universe had agreed. The failing of his snap making the inevitability uncertain is such a human flaw. Well, it looks like we're improvising. Thanos is hubris in this moment, literally quoting some of his last words from his future self after learning the universe didn't like what he did, deciding to go further. Dread it, run from it, destiny arrives all the same. Well, Thanos, buddy, we'll just have to change destiny then. Thanos never would have predicted this. While Tony's technology and genius allowed him to steal and then harness the stones, it was his humanity that snapped. In the end, his greatest superpower was his heart. Side note of a less emotional variety, Strange half predicted this. This is your future. It's my destiny. If I tell you what happens, it won't happen. You almost feel bad for the guy. I mean, he just wanted to make everybody happy. Nah, you bad. Enjoy your comeuppance. And just like Infinity War, nothing more he can do but sit down. Slightly less jovial expression this time. And even if he's a garbage fire stubborn narcissist, he was right about one thing. Feel so desperately that you're right. It's frightening. It turns the legs to jelly. We're gonna be okay. And then even more personal sacrifice, this time from Pepper to give Tony's last moment not sorrow, but relief. You can rest now. The one thing she said he could never do, she now lets him do. And they did not pull any punches. No quips, no one-liners. He just needs to let go. I 
think it's fine that this was cut, but I also love that it exists, because to me it still happened. But maybe it wasn't something we needed to know the first time around. If you told me 10 years ago that we weren't alone, let alone, you know, to this extent, I'm... To be fair, 10 years ago was 2013, one year after you defeated aliens, but Endgame proper starts on a Tony HUD message and ends on a Tony HUD message. I'm not even tripping for it. Everything's gonna work out exactly the way it's supposed to. He's not wrong. It was one in 14,605, but it was the way it was supposed to work out. I love you 3,000. <laughs> On a slightly more serious note, Julia and I were just talking about this scene the other day, and she started tearing up. This is the impact of these movies. This is the impact of these words that came from Robert Downey Jr.'s children. This is the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to other human beings. And this sweep around the funeral is a great way to visually acknowledge all the Avengers and extended Avengers who've made this movie possible with their standalone movies. Even the kid that Tony was connected to. You know, I wish there was a way that I could let her know. We did it. She knows. We both do. Bring Vision back. You know, you sound like cheeseburgers. To be fair, he hated them so much that he quit drugs. So... Yeah, you're right. It's time for me to be who I am, rather than who I'm supposed to be. But you, you you're a leader. Sometimes it takes a chat with your dead mom to achieve self-realization and start the healing process. Everyone fails at who they're supposed to be for. It's how well they succeed at being who they are. And goodness, I love that this is where we leave Thor. It's not just another, we're done with this character, so let's come up with a contrived reason to remove him from the field. No, it's a decade of character growth where he learned a little bit each time, starting as this guy, ending as this guy. As Guardians of the Galaxy back together again. Yep. Everybody knows who's in charge. Me. Yes, you. Of course. Of course. Make this happen. Gonna miss you, buddy. Say hi to Red Skull for me. All that to say, Bucky knows. It's beautiful. Nope. The emotions aren't over. It's honestly the one back of my mind wish for Steve that I really never thought they'd deliver. I'm a softie for love, what can I say? And I realize that he's a different person now. No one said it had to be perfect, but goodness, he and Peggy both deserve a chance. Love. How about these lyrics? It's gonna get zappy. Never thought that you would be standing here so close to me. There's so much I feel that I should say, but words can wait until some other day. Some special scene credits getting increasingly more involved as we move to our core Avengers. Good stuff. One last audible tribute to the man that started it all and then finished it all. Iron Man. So, my main predictions were right, Tony died sacrificing himself to stop Thanos, Cap got a lot more screen time and retired, Ant-Man was pivotal to time travel, Gamora's back, but I'll be honest. There was such an overwhelming consensus in my comments that Cap would die, I was a little on the fence walking into the theater. I realize now that you all just trusted MatPat, which is often fine. But when Tony started talking about dying three minutes in, I knew I was right. Which, to that, I I'm sorry if I spoiled it for you. I see that comment popping up in that theory video. I honestly didn't have any clue about the specifics, and that's what really made Made it work anyway, you know. You see where you're going? Mm hmm. Okay. Now let's worry about how you get there. More on that later. You've all mostly been giving me a hard time about Sam getting the shield rather than Bucky, but hey, I ain't perfect. Also, someone pointed this out after last week, which I love. You're a good man, Sam. Not a perfect soldier, but a good man. But you know what else isn't perfect? This movie. Here are the top 22 reasons Endgame is totally overrated. Nah. I only had one real complaint walking out of theaters, and it was that this line hit a little too close to home. I don't even know who you are. This isn't our Thanos. And that's hard because we don't know him the same way. A lot can change in four years, especially with the acquisition of an Infinity Stone. The victory doesn't have the same satiating effect. Infinity War Thanos respected our heroes. You have my respects, Doc. I hope they remember you. Endgame Thanos does not. I'm gonna enjoy it very, very much. But I've actually come around to two things. First, our Thanos, this is rough, but our Infinity War Thanos won. He died having fulfilled his purpose, never knowing defeat. His own beheading was a step along the road to his ultimate goal. Even his past self recognized that. That is destiny fulfilled. So that's dark, but 
reality. The second part is that since Infinity War was Thanos Prime's TP's movie, TP's death made it so that he couldn't steal the show again in Endgame. And that's A-OK. -okay. Endgame is not his movie. This is the Avengers movie. All of them. It's sort of funny that Endgame made Infinity War seem light on characters after all was said and done. I can't talk about everyone, but I want to talk about a few. Let's start with the can of worms from last week and discuss Thor. Are the filmmakers making light of PTSD and depression? I don't think so, and I'm going to explain why I don't think so, but my opinion doesn't invalidate your experiences with PTSD and depression regarding this movie. Part of my point is that everyone's experience and the way they weather it is unique. The first thing I'd say is that Thor's not human. I think his weight gain mostly works as comedy because he's a Norse god. Apparently weight gain is a concern for gods. I admit that's a cop-out excuse, so take it or leave it. Honestly, it wasn't handled the best, but to say this was all just for a fat joke would be missing the forest for the trees. And if it really were just a joke, surely he would have used his god lightning powers to make himself abbed up again, right? To keep us from laughing during the final battle? I see this portrayal as, well, pretty real. I think people are focused on and maybe interpreting the character's responses to Thor as an endorsement of mistreating people with depression from our filmmakers. Sadly, that's real life. No one gets special treatment when they're going through something like this. And to be fair, the guy is hilariously hammered at work. Eggs, breakfast, no, I'd like a Bloody Mary. But what's being missed is Thor himself. Thor is so shut off. Most of it never effectively registers for him. It's a facade. You look like melted ice cream. <laughs> for the most part, even if he laughs along, he's disconnected precisely the way he would be. There are five and a half-ish main things that do register. The one half is when he almost loses it during his ether TED talk. Then Nat's death makes him angry, denial being clear evidence of emotional distress. But the first significant response is when Thanos' name is triggering for Thor. It's a pretty clear example of PTSD. His smile disappears, it's like he was teleported back to reality with a brick to the nose. He goes blind with rage and despair in an instant before finding another escape when Hulk says he might be scared, but obviously he's a broken person. The next two are during his Asgard reunion. We get two examples of how you can treat people with PTSD, one good, one terrible. He's having a panic attack and Rocket slaps him. It does momentarily shock him out of it, but it doesn't help, he still runs away. Tough love doesn't work on PTSD. The other might seem like tough love, but it's just honesty with a purpose. No, you're no idiot. A failure? Absolutely. It's a little bit harsh. <laughs> Even if she's harsh, his mom reaffirms him, tells him to stop trying to be something he's not. And then the last and most poignant for me is when the new glove comes out. Thor needs so desperately to do something because he believes it will snap him out of his funk. His friends know better. Well, most of them. Everyone is tough on him throughout, but his closest friends get real at this moment. I'll admit the cheese whiz joke is a little out of place and harsh and diminishing, but that is how some friends often treat each other. Not saying it's okay, but again, it's real. And you have to remember that Rhodey is punching up here. Thor's veins are actually filled with lightning. And honestly, for me, Broken Spine Guy gets a pass. Human airman who lost the use of his legs through gods and robots fighting it out would be very familiar with what Thor is going through. You'd like to think he'd know tough love traditionally doesn't work, but again, God of Lightning. And Rhodey's still working through his own crap, even if it's only briefly mentioned. I wasn't always like this. Me either. But please, don't try to slap or insult your loved ones out of PTSD and depression, friends. It won't work, and you might just lose yourself one loved one. I already covered my favorite part of Thor's arc. He doesn't wake up the next morning right as rain. He's only beginning his journey to put himself back together. I'll forgive them if he's back to normal for Guardians 3, but hey, James Gunn. It wouldn't hurt to not wipe his slate completely clean. I'm not saying make him all mopey. A lot of us use humor as a coping mechanism. That part is right on target. Of course. Of course. Of course. I've already talked a lot about Iron Man because he is so important. Without Robert Downey Jr., this universe probably doesn't exist, at least like this. Even he rolls his eyes at that, but we fell in love with Iron Man in a way no one expected, even us. That laid the groundwork for everything that came after. And you know I love a comeback story, so it doesn't hurt that he had a rough decade leading up to Iron Man. You can't credit the Iron Man role with his recovery, he'd already started down that path several years before. But honestly, I think that says even more. He sought help, slowly got back into acting, knocked it out of the park with a few non-blockbusters, and then slipped into a career-defining role. They never went down the substance abuse path for Tony Stark in the MCU because, in some ways, I feel like we got post-alcoholic Tony Stark. Tony has always been cocky, arrogant, and self-serving. Heck, he creates the first Iron Man suit to escape the terrorists. But through his time with Yinsen comes out of the cave a new man. He goes out of his way in that movie to save innocent people. He carries that through the next eight films with a few missteps here and there. But even when he was fighting for more regulation of his own team, his goal was always to do good. Well he found the ultimate good in Endgame. We'll miss you, RDJ. The MCU won't be the same without you.
The same can be said for Chris Evans in Captain America. It's hard to remember where he came from and what made him Cap in the first place. It was never because he was strong or fast. It was always his heart. Notice Peggy doesn't keep a picture of beefy Steve on her desk. The contrast between fresh out of the ice Cap in 2012 versus 2023 Cap, though short-lived on screen, is apparent and for a lot of fans, self-evident. This is Cap pre-finding out Hydra has been inside the organization and country he dedicated his life to. Pre-brainwashed Bucky trying to kill him. Pre-losing his closest friends over the Sokovia Accords and obviously pre-failure to Thanos. The great thing about his arc is that Endgame brings him back to the Captain America we know and love. The soldier who thought the best he had was to jump on a grenade. The leader who was so instrumental during the Battle of New York. The team's moral compass doing his best for everyone except himself. The man so full of heart he believed he could will Thanos and his entire army to death alone. He didn't need to say he could do this all day, all he had to do was stand up. He completes his arc so much that he's able to accept Tony's final lesson in this movie. Tony starts selfish and selfless. Cap starts selfless and selfless, but also finally internalizes that he's earned a break, a life. They both took the best things the other had going for them. It's utterly satisfying. I love every second of it. In some ways, reluctant to be famous Chris Evans and Hollywood bad boy Robert Downey Jr. were the only choices. Speaking of Cap, let's talk about setups and payoffs versus twists and subversions. I imagine 99% of the audience knew what happened when Cap didn't show up on the platform. There were plenty of ways the filmmakers could have given us more of a gotcha moment here, but the problem with a gotcha moment is that that's it. It can just be a flash of, oh, cool. But when you go this setup and payoff route, the same moment can feel earned and justified. And like there was no other choice for Steve, showing him obsess over his true north with Peggy's picture, letting it be the turning point in his battle with Cap 1.0, even giving us this heart-wrenching voyeur moment, making it almost feel wrong to keep them apart. By the end, everyone would have been furious if he didn't go back to be with her. And that makes it perfect closure for our first Avenger. But it does bring up some questions. Had Cap just come back to the platform as an old man, the questions would have been less numerous. Regardless of that, even if they did create an unsolvable mess, it was the right call thematically. But since it's fun to talk about time travel, the insinuation here is that he just lived out his life, waited in real time for the day he left in 2023 to arrive, and sat on the bench, probably watching them send his younger self back. But that doesn't really make sense since his existence in the past should create a new branching timeline. Maybe he saved the last of his pin particles for that day to finally return and then left his Peggy timeline in the past after her death? Or perhaps it's been part of this universe all along? Peggy has no picture of her husband by her bedside, but does have a picture of Steve 25 years after he went into the ice? And obviously, Old Cap is going to remove all the photos of him and swear Peggy to secrecy once they catch up to the time when Cap Prime's been unfrozen. She says in an interview that Steve saved her future husband during the events of Captain America. That included Steve. She even has a memory lapse where she thinks Steve has come back, which could be a real memory from the end of Endgame. I mean, even the timelines add up. I highly doubt this was planned out, but I'm cool if they confirm it now. The Ancient One was pretty specific about the stones being pivotal to creating new timelines. Although Professor Hulk made it clear you don't change the present by changing the past. Cap existing in our timeline as an old man is changing the present. Everything else was reverted when Cap replaced the stones. Since Tony ended up getting the space stone in the 70s, Loki really ducked out here. I doubt Cap was able to fix that, which does leave the door open for 2012 Loki to be alive somewhere. But also, just because Banner explains how time travel works doesn't mean he's right. In fact, we know he's not an expert. It's baby. It's Scott. As a baby, he'll grow. While the multiverse is alluded to, personally, I think the easiest way to think about time travel in this movie is that there really is only one timeline. There was always potential for alternates, but Cap corrected them all. Banner's also pretty explicit that there are no time loops. Traveling back in time was a one-time occurrence on this one timeline. All the variants, Howard talking to his future son, Thor talking to his mom, all of that was undone because Cap snuck in and put everything back the way it was. I'll probably change my mind, time travel can send you in circles. Watch Primer if you really want to scramble your brains. But either way, whether Cap lived out an entire life in this universe or another is moot. He got to be with Peggy. The top could still be spinning, it doesn't matter. I loved Nat's sacrifice and I loved that the team up scene was for her. Scarlet is so pivotal to this universe. She wasn't always written perfectly, but between Winter Soldier, Avengers, and these two movies, she became an essential member of the OG team, even taking on its weirder side. I get emails from a raccoon, so nothing sounds crazy anymore. It's not wrong to feel cheated by her death. I'm working on it myself, even if I think she deserved this moment because of her importance. It's a big moment. Still waiting on her funeral, but also looking forward to her solo movie. I love the decision to give Ant-Man and Hawkeye full story arcs in this film after leaving them out of Infinity War. These huge ensemble movies are tough. I'm sure Wanda stands were left wanting. I know I was sad to not even hear Vision mentioned by name, but I think they incorporated the new players without letting them overshadow the heroes we were here to see, all complete with the passing of the guard. 
And let's not forget about Joe and Anthony Russo, as well as Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. It's astounding to consider what they've accomplished and how many times they did it, each time building on the next from Winter Soldier to Civil War and now with Infinity War and Endgame. Credit to having a plan from the beginning. It pays off. It doesn't matter if someone had predicted this movie down to the second, seeing it come together was special. It's actually crazy how fast paced this movie is for three hours. Apparently not everyone agrees with that, but we get to time travel from killing Thanos really quickly. Not even a pause to talk about the nano suit Ant-Man Star-Lord time travel suits they build. I talked about the decision to let Infinity War's outcome stand and how much I loved it, but it does like quadruple duty. Keeping all non-OG Avengers snapped allows OG Avengers to be the one to end the conflict or at least be paramount in it. It also allows this universe, the MCU, to have stakes. Most importantly, the resolution they come up with gives us time, real time with each character we've loved for so long. Peering into the past to remind us where they came from and how long they've been going at this, especially stairs. So many stairs! Giving us closure between characters you'd never expect, even with their past selves. No! In my opinion, three hours without a second wasted. One other thing this movie did was create so many unintentionally interesting side stories. At the beginning of the second act, or end of the first, depending on how you slice it, everyone is collecting Avengers, and it's as if they need to be pulled out of their own standalone movies. I'll watch Ronan Dexter cutting up the non-snapped bad guys around the globe on HBO. I'll tune into Fox to watch the Thor and Korg sitcom with guest appearances from Jeff Goldblum as Noob Master 69. Obviously, we'd all watch the NBC drama of Tony becoming a dad for five years and teaching Morgan to curse. What are you doing up, little miss? Nope. Side note, if you want to confirm that 2012 Loki is Noob Master, I'm on board with that too. Rip off your arms and shove them up your butt! But even without those Disney Plus shows being greenlit, Endgame has some absolutely stunning visuals. Sometimes full CGI characters in full CGI environments. Thanos walking through his garden Maximus style, every scene with Rocket where it's a mid or a wide or a close up, he always looks so realistic. The time suits are completely digital, wrap your mind around that. Clint's boots? Not real. Cap v Cap was done completely on a green screen stage. The buildings and walkways and windows and phones are all digital. Tony's skinnying is also astoundingly realistic looking. It's bizarre, the tech is so clearly there at this point, I've decided Michael Douglas just cannot be convincingly de-aged for some reason. But overall, this movie is top tier MCU beauty. I have my favorite small details that were so numerous they would have bogged the videos down more than they already were. But also, let's start a fun new segment called Multi-Part Videos Allow Me to See Your Comments and Steal Your Words for My Own Personal Gain. <laughs> you guys had lots to say, so I'm going to paraphrase, but you all caught things I didn't, made me realize things were bigger deals than I thought, and just generally increased my love for this movie. Starting with Thor calling out someone for saying that the ether was a stone. Cap's face was almost a win, saying they should amend that, but then calling it a stone in the next sentence. Many years ago, had to hide the stone. Nebula finally winning something in her life after always losing to Gamora and being properly thrilled. Cap's theme playing when Tony gives him his shield back. Speaking of music, a few dozen of you or so were super happy to correct me about there being more horns in the opening because half the orchestra was missing. Great detail. I do, however, stick by my statement. For me, a half full orchestra made the horns punch much louder. Professor Hulk tries to console Thor, but knows he needs him to remove his hand to keep his anger in check since Hulk is still in there. These location and time cards, yes. Similar to Civil War, but just so matter of fact and winking. Go ahead, get excited, we're going where you think we're going. Clint's first arrow fired after his family is dusted is at Vormir to save Nat because he'd finally returned to Hawkeye after becoming Ronin. One last one is the 2,000 pounds equals a ton thing. It's a cute idea, but he says tons, which is at least 4,000 pounds, so... The thing that makes it amazing for me, I already said last week, Robert Downey Jr.'s kids say that to him, which again wrecks me just thinking about it. And there are more, but this is why this movie is cinema. People connecting and discussing the things they love because of the emotional experiences this movie gave them. And here's my rapid fire list of favorites that I just couldn't fit. Nat's ballet shoes, Clint's bow in the door, Professor Hulk using a pencil on the controls because his fingers are too big, the smudges on Hulk's glasses, Spidey swinging on Giant Man's hand during the battle, Salt Bay Thanos, Carol's comic accurate haircut, Peter saying, You are Mr. Stark. Tony joking about lingerie, Tony asking for a medic to help his past self, Tony threatening to sell all of Morgan's toys. Go to bed or I'll sell all your toys. Rocket calling Scott a puppy, Scott standing by with orange slices for Clint, Clint expecting more Outriders after his ascent. A touching reunion between Quill and Gamora. You missed the first time, then you got them both the second time. And if I'm being honest, there are a few moments that I, I just don't think they got enough wins. Five years ago we lost. Today we have a chance to take it all back. This is the fight of our lives. And we're gonna win. We won. 
This is dark. I love you 3,000. I love you 3,000. Not that it's a competition, but she loves me 3,000. Who oh, does she know? You were somewhere in the low six to nine hundred branch. <laughs>